In the next 100 seconds, we're going to cover the latest breakthroughs in generative AI running on supercomputers. Learn how to feed a large language model with data. Everybody knows that generative AI is exploding. In fact, I believe it is the next generation of computing. All future tech platforms will be built on top of generative AI. We're already starting to see some examples that you've probably heard of, like Dolly, Copilot, and even Microsoft's new search engine, Bing. This generative AI explosion is driven by scaling laws, which predict that large language models are gonna keep getting better. They just follow a simple recipe, get a bigger model. These models are accelerated by deep learning frameworks, build a giant supercomputer, accelerate it by GPUs, and feed it with more data. And that's the focus of this talk, but data is hard. What does feeding a large language model with data look like? Start with the foundation model, define the inputs and outputs, extract, transform, load your data from your data warehouse into the large language model, and then iterate on it. Many companies want to do this, but it's just way too hard. Even Microsoft and GitHub leading tech companies had to hire a specialized machine learning team, OpenAI, to help them do it. Let's explore why this is so hard. Part of the issue is that it's unexplored and quite unintuitive. Let me start with three myths about building data sets that I used to believe. Myth number one, compute is the only bottleneck. The promise of scaling laws is that data doesn't matter. All you need is a lot of compute and a giant pile of data, and general AI will emerge from that. Recent results bust this myth. Looking deeper into the theory of machine learning busts this myth. Recent systems like ChatGPT show that techniques like reinforcement learning with human feedback give more than 100x improvement in model size. Another common myth. We need big data sets and they're going to be expensive. How much do you think it would cost to build a giant data set like ImageNet or Open Images? Take a hint. Those data sets were funded by grad students. If you look deeper, this myth is also busted. Data sets don't need massive human labor. Clever humans plus computers vastly outperform hand labeling. The power of mechanical Turk is a myth and a dystopian nightmare. I became a computer scientist because I believe that computers should work for us, not the other way around. And in fact, they're more effective than us. In a recent project, I took a project that was estimated to cost $5 million with human labeling down to $3,000 with an optimized system. Have you heard this one? Standard big existing data sets cover all use cases as well. Open images in the pile are going to cover it all. What happens if you deploy models trained on these data sets in the wild? You'll quickly discover that they have glaring holes. Take this as an example of Dollar Street, a data set that was gathered from low-income households. Foundational models trained on open images are 3.5 times less accurate on Dollar Street than they are on open images. And in fact, this was true for all of the applications that we saw. We didn't use models trained on the pile for Bing search, for GitHub Copilot, or for image generation. Here's some data sets I've either built or interviewed the creators of, and that's where I source these Bifbus from. These data sets paint a really clear picture. Data matters, and it's actually quite hard and unintuitive. These data sets were huge efforts. They took expert teams multiple years to create. They're huge efforts. What would it take to remove this bottom? In ML Commons, we ran three data competitions. And we surveyed about 200 submissions of data pipelines from leading production and research systems. And we noticed these common patterns. Systems start with data parsing, get the data out of the database. It's really hard, it's data wrangling. Systems also use data augmentation. They combine existing data sources with machine learning methods to generate new data. They also use advanced data quality and cleaning methods to filter out all of the garbage. And finally, they use error analysis after the model has been trained. How does error analysis work? Take 100 examples from real users running through your system and categorize them into the top three to five sources of common errors, then go back and generate data covering them. These common patterns can be augmented with advanced technology like reinforcement learning with human feedback, where a reward predictor is trained using your data instead of training the model itself. And this allows your data to go further. You get a bigger boost out of your data with RLHF than with fine tuning alone. So let's put it all together. Are we actually seeing an emerging framework for data? Data sources are combined with foundational models to generate new data. Data filters that are also generative models clean our data and our labels. Reward predictors are trained on these refined data sets. And these reward predictors are used to fine tune foundational models. This is what I'm calling a large language model data engine. If we had specialized languages and systems for running this engine, how much easier would it be to create large language models? If you're passionate about data or just building generative AI applications, send me a note.